Hi, it's Heather McConley. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about money. Specifically, we're talking about how to give cash back to our schools and other organizations through our book fair program and our Reach for the Stars and even through a few small booth events. Um, so this is going to talk not necessarily about what we do in the back office, but how we do business, um, how we actually do the calculations and do business otherwise. So um, bear with me. I'm going to share my screen here. We're going to look at a PowerPoint um, to show you all the numbers and how they are going to work together. Okay, so here we go. Um, how do we give cash back? So we're going to talk first about options for book fairs, and then we're going to talk about options for Reach for the Stars, and then we're going to talk about the small booth events. Um, and uh, so the next one. These are the percentages that were published by the Reading is by Osborne, uh, by Home Office, under the readingisagift.com website. Now that website is extraordinarily old and I don't necessarily recommend sharing that website um, unless people are really adamant about seeing something in print that says that these are our options. Um, and a very few people are, are going to do that, but if it happens, go to readingisagift.com and you can find these numbers there. Um, under $750 in sales, there's no cash back option. Um, and that is for our protection, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, between 750 and 2000, the cash back uh, percentage that Esborn recommends for us is 15%. Between two and three thousand, it's twenty percent, and over three thousand, we can give the full twenty-five percent cash back. Now, again, two things. First of all, these numbers, the the seven hundred and fifty minimum, was first put into place because of our higher book fair minimums um, a couple of years back. But the second thing to remember is that these numbers are here for our protection for. Um, for a number of different reasons. And so I would highly recommend that we use these numbers and I'll show you why um, in just a, in a little bit to show you why they actually do help us. So, um, but these are the numbers. So 15% under $2,000 with no cash back under 750, 20% between two and $3,000 and 25% for $3,000 and more. All right, so I'm not going to go into the back office and show you how to create a book fair order. I'm going to pretend that another person has already showed you how to do that. Um, and I'm just going to talk numbers and strategy and so forth with you. So you need to create the book fair order. You need, um, you, these orders can't all have come through online because we need to be able to split all of the sales, all of the sales, all of the sales into two thirds and one third. So um, because we need to put two thirds of the books that have been sold into the full retail area. And then the other third, which is kind of like the 50% match into the rewards category, into the school rewards category for 50%. Um, and so and I'll show you actual numbers here in just a minute. But so that's the that's the mechanics is you split the books that you need to have shipped from Oklahoma to your home or to the school. You need to split them into two thirds of the amount and one third of the amount. Okay, so that means you're going to give to Osborne's home office less money than you took in. Okay, so just let that sink in for a half a second. You're going to spend less at home office than you took in. And I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. And then from your bank account, because you took in that money when you sold the books, from your bank account, you're going to give the school or the organization their percentage. Okay? So that's the general mechanic. Let's take a look at how it's going to work in real life. So here is an example. Maybe this is a small book fair, a preschool a very small elementary school, um, maybe 50, 60, 70 kids. 
and you do $1,200 in sales at your book fair. Okay, so the school has requested instead of receiving books, free books back. So instead of getting $600 in free books, they want cash back. What's that going to look like? Well, this is under the 2000 bar. So it's going to get 15% cash back. We're going to split the $1,200 in books that were either sold or ordered into two thirds. And so two thirds of $1,200 is $800. And one third, and one third of $1,200 is $400, okay? Also, just please note for those who are mathematically challenged, $400 is half of $800, okay? Um, so you're gonna put $800 of books into the full retail category, into the you know, to regular category. And you're gonna put $400 into the school rewards or the free category, okay? Then you pay Usborne $800 plus the $5 book fair fee, I'm not gonna get into tax because tax is different for each state. Some states don't have any tax at all and some states tax everything. And a lot of states are in between. So I'm, I'm just working with sale numbers. I'm not going to work with tax numbers at all, okay? So you pay Usborne $800 plus the $500 book fair fee. Now you have taken in $1,200 because you've sold $1,200 worth of books. So you're only paying us for 800 That means you have $400 left in the bank account. And of that $400, you're going to give the school their 15% of cash. And 15% of $1,200 is $180. So you, in order to find that, just FYI for those, again, who are math challenged, you multiply the total sales amount, the 1200, by 0.15, and you come up with $180 that you need to give them. Um, and you can give them this in the form of a check, uh, in the form of cash, although I think uh, something with a paper trail is, per, per, uh, is better, um, or you can um, PayPal it to them if they have a PayPal account or something. But um, Usually, I write the school a check for 15% of the proceeds in this case. Okay, so this is an example. Here's another example. A large book fair. Let's say you do a $6,000 book fair with a friend. Uh, maybe your team leader or uh, your upline if um, this is your first book fair especially. And you're going to do half of the work and your friend is going to do half of the work. And each of you is going to claim half of the sales because of that. It's going to be a 50-50 split. And that's just the reason that I'm calling it a 50-50 split is just because that's an easy number to talk about. Um, so each of you claims $3,000 in sales. Okay. Um, now, in general, when you have a book fair this large, a couple of things are going to happen in general. Um, in general, you're going to be working with somebody who already has some sort of an inventory. Um, and in general, you're also going to need to consign, which is another word for borrow, a good number of books from home office. Sometimes you're going to need to consign nearly double what you anticipate selling because the people who come through last still need to have some sort of a selection um, in addition to the people who come through first, okay? So when we're talking about a $6,000 book fair, you're talking probably in the neighborhood of about $10,000 worth of books that you've taken out in consignment or something very similar to that. Um, if you're extraordinarily lucky, it's only $6,000 in consignment that you've taken out and you can supplement with another four to $6,000 from one person's inventory. Um, but this is what the, the book fair looks like, okay, in, from, from the behind-the-scenes point of view. Um, so each of you is going to claim $3,000 in sales. You split that $3,000 into uh, two-thirds and one-third, just like we did before, and two-thirds is the 2000 one-third is the 1000 You're going to put $2,000 into retail, 
and $1,000 into the rewards category. Okay, the, like the host rewards, this is the school rewards usually because we're talking about a book fair. You pay Osborne $2,000 plus the book fair fee, and then you need to write a check to the school for 25% of the cash you took in, or $750. So if each person does that, each person is giving the school $750, and the school makes $1,500, which is 25% of their $6,000 book fair. Okay? Now keeping in mind, that this is with only cash back, okay? You're not giving any books for free um, with this book fair. You're just giving cash back, okay? And um, so that's a, but that's an example of a larger school book fair. So if, so just as a, as a general note, um, you are paying Usborne less, which means that you're also keeping more of the money. So you're paying the school $750, meaning you have $250 extra dollars in your bank account. But that also um, accounts for the fact that if the school were claiming free books, you would be putting in $3,000 in sales and getting extra money in the form of commission because of that book fair. Um, so it's actually, this is actually protecting you on some level because your commission is lower than it otherwise would be okay so keep in mind even though you quote unquote have money left over it really is not a whole lot of money left over um, it's a fair commission okay next here is a cautionary tale let's pretend you have a medium-sized book fair maybe you've taken out consignment um, you're doing this one by yourself your normal commission would be if you had $2,000 in sales and then you gave the school $1,000 in free books, your normal commission would be $340, okay? That's 2,000 times 17%. So let's pretend for the sake of argument that you have promised the school 25% cash back because you know you may be that generous if you want to be. So you put in $1,334 in sales into retail and $666 into the free book category or the rewards book category, paying Osborne about $1,340 with the book fair fee. Again, leaving tax 100% out of this. So therefore, um, from the $1,334 that you put in, you make a $227 commission. Now keeping in mind, that's over $100 less in commission because the school has requested cash back instead of free books. Okay, so that 25% you're giving the school is $500, okay? And leaving you in your bank account $160 plus the $227 you'll receive in the commission for the weekly commission. If you had given 20%, like Esborne recommends, you would have $260 instead. And especially if you've taken out any consignment or anything else, um, if you wanted to pay for things like bags, if you wanted to pay for things like flyers for the school and things like that, that $260 is just an extra measure of protection for you. It really can make the difference between making any money at all and making, um, and making very little. So I would really highly recommend protecting yourself by using the numbers that Osborne provides us with the 15 and 20 and 25 percent and their their uh, floors that they provide okay um, again it's there for your protection it's there for everybody's protection all right uh, i'm going to be very brief and i'm not going to go into a whole ton of detail because this can get very complex okay um, it's not it's not really all that complicated i hate to i hate to make it sound scary it's not really all that complicated. It just requires some backward math. So let me show you what I mean. So if the school wants both books and cash back, have them pick out their free books first, okay? And so regardless of the size of the book fair, the school always receives 50% free books. So if we're talking about that $2,000 book fair again, the school would be eligible for $1,000 in free books. 
But let's say they only take part of that. Let's say they take half. So they take $500 in books. So they have technically $500 worth of book money left over. So you, I want you to do the backwards math and convert that into book fair money. So in terms of book fair money, in terms of sales, that would be like $1,000 in sales. Okay. So you convert it back to the, the cash back, uh, back to the regular dollar amount. And then we're going to take the percentage um, and of, the, of the cash. So for a $2,000 book fair, they get 20% 20, 20 um, cash back. And so they would get 20% of that $1,000. Okay, so they get $200 plus they would get the $500 in free books. Um, so again, the multiply the free books not taken by two, by the number two, uh, that's the backwards math, and then take the cash back from that um, based on the percentage of the full sales of the book fair. Okay, so it's, um, again, it can be a little complex. Um, certainly, if you're worried about it, run numbers by your upline leader, uh, and this is, but this is the way, it, it's, it, it's, it's a little complicated, but this is the way to do it, okay? So first have the school take their free books, then convert back um, the free books not taken into the other um, percent, into the other, pretend they're money, it's money again, and then take the 20% or the take the percentage that they've earned in terms of cash back from that number. Okay. Hopefully that was clear. Probably wasn't, but I'm going to move on now. Okay. Going on to Reach for the Stars. The Reach for the Stars program is very similar to a book fair program, except it gives us a slightly higher percentage earned, which is nice. Um, so just like for a book fair, I'm not going to go into the mechanics of going into the back office, but create a Reach for the Stars order. Now, keeping in mind that um, you have pledges that are coming in and you have to order um, the children's uh, books from their pledges. So half, at least half of the money that you bring in must go to the school in the form of books for the children who earned the pledges. Um, and then we'll get here in just a half a second, but you will have some free books that are due to the school. And depending on how you do prizes, you may have some prize books. I always do, um, as prizes for the kids, with my Reach for the Stars, I always do free books because, um, and sometimes really nice books, because that is a nice, it's a good thing for the kids, okay? So um, split those, so you, you take the 50% of pledges, you add in the free books that the school has earned, you add in any prize books, okay? So, and then they take that whole number, that, that whole big number that you've just added together here. Now, split that number into two thirds for the retail and one third for the rewards or the free books, okay? Um, and give the school then the percentage of cash back that they've earned. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know if you've seen any of the literature out there. I have a, a little trifold that I give to my schools. Um, home office has a little thing that they give to if, they, if you want to. But every single one talks about giving both books and cash. There is no option for Reach for the Stars that does not hurt you. Um, that does not give the, the school some books. So um, you so the school must receive, or the organization must receive both books and cash for you to be reimbursed properly from the Reach for the Stars, okay? Promise? All right. So let me show you, again, some examples of how this would work. Here's an example. Let's say you have, and this is actually from pretty close to real life. Um, let's say you have about $1,500 in pledges, and you've told the school that they are going to get 30% back in the form of books and 20% back in the form of cash. 
in addition to the 50% of free books that the kids are going to get. Okay, so every Reach for the Stars is going to give you 100% return. The kids get 50% and then the school gets 50%. And it's how you divide up the school's 50% that matters. These are the percentages that I suggest for dividing up the school's cash back, dividing it up to in 30% books and 20% cash. Um, personally, I train that under no circumstances should you give more than a 25% books and 25% cash split. Again, for your own protection. Okay, so using these real numbers here, the children are going to get $750 in free books from the pledges, right? Because they, they got that money in. You're going to add in 30% of books, which is $450 in quote unquote free books. And for the sake of argument, we're going to add in $120 in prize books for a total of $1,320 in books needed. Now, just like with the book fair order, we're going to split those into two thirds and one third. And so two thirds of 1,320, that's the number of books that we need to order. Two thirds of 1,320 is $880. And that goes into the retail category. And one third is $440. And that goes into the free or the 50% rewards category. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. So you're going to pay Usborne $880 plus a $5 book fair fee. Now you took in $1,500. So you have a little over $600 left, but you still have to give the school their percentage, which is 20% cash. We have to give them $300. Again, writing a check for that $300. Hopefully that makes some sense. Moving on to a larger reach for the stars. Here's another example. Let's pretend you have a $10,000 reach for the stars and you've promised the school 25% cash back. The children somehow, sometimes people end these, by the way, with a book fair. Um, and sometimes they end them with um, just straight ordering from the wish lists. The children, are, regardless of how, are going to get $5,000 of books from their pledges. You're going to add 25% of books back to the school, that's free books back to the school, plus $500 if prize books, because you've got a large, this is probably a large elementary school to get to $10,000 in pledges here. So $500 in prize books. Um, and so you're going to need a total of $8,000 worth of books from Osborne to be shipped from Oklahoma to you, right? So split that $8,000 into two-thirds and one-third. Two-thirds of 8,000 is 5,336. 5, and one-third of 8,000 is $2,664. So the $5,000 amount goes into the retail category. And the 2664 goes into the free or the 50% rewards category. Okay, are we following me so far? hope so. Um, so you're going to pay Usborne for the books in the retail category plus the book fair fee. So you pay Usborne $5,336 plus the $5 book fair fee. You have approximately $4,660 left in your bank account that you have taken in because people wrote you checks and gave you lots of cash. Okay, so you have $4,660 in your bank account. And you're going to pay the school their 25% cash back, which is, again, the highest percentage of cash back that I can recommend. Um, and I do recommend a 30-20 split, even for a book, for, even for a reach for the stars that's this big. I recommend a 30-20 split if you, can, if you can swing it. So you're going to pay the school $2,500 in cash. So you got $10,000 in cash. The kids are going to get $5,000 worth of books. The school is going to get $2,500 worth of books. And then you're going to pay the school $2,500 in cash. And in your bank account, yes, you're going to have over $1,100 left. But again, you've only put in $5,000 in sales. 
Um, and so your commission is lower by that amount, that amount of money coming back from Osborne. So that is part of what helps make the Reach for the Stars worth it for you. Okay? Um, okay, I hope that that makes some sense. Moving along. Here are some general cautions. Again, just I, I, would, I, I wish I could tell you how much I appreciate these percentages. Over 10 years in business, and I've done lots of events that I've done by myself, I've done just as many events um, that I've split with a partner, and these percentages are suggested for our benefit. They're, they're not suggested for anybody else's. Um, they're, they're suggested to protect us, to be able to make it possible for us to do business and to make a profit, okay? Um, to make a fair profit, not to, not to make too much of a profit, just a fair one. So do use those percentages. 15% cash back for $750 or more, 20% cash back for $2,000 or more, and 25% for $3,000 or more. Um, and then for Reach for the Stars, my, my percent that I recommend is 30% books back and 20% cash back. Now, when you do split sales and commissions with another person, it makes those suggested percentages necessary. It doesn't make them an option. It really truly makes them necessary. And under no circumstances, unless you really want to cut into your own commission, okay, um, don't promise anybody more than 25% cash back. Because, and know if you ever do, that what you're doing is cutting into your own commission. When you're offering both books and cash back, whether it's for a Reach for the Stars or for a book fair, be very cautious and make sure the numbers work. Um, make sure that they, you know, run them by your upline if you need to. It's really important to make sure um, that the percentages are going to work for everybody uh, and not just, and don't give away the farm because you need to make money at this. This is a business. It's not a hobby. A hobby doesn't make money. A business does. Okay. So those are some general cautions. And now let's talk about small booth events. And the reason that I put this in here is because occasionally, not always, um, people will say, why don't you give me a percentage of sales from the table? Um, or why don't you, you know, reimburse me based on how much you sell? Um, this is especially true for small events like around the holidays. It's especially true for um, smaller school events where they don't necessarily plan on making much money. Um, sometimes it's true of events where it's the first year and they don't know how much to charge. And so um, they're going to ask for a percentage of table sales. So that's when that happens, is, is when there's smaller events. Um, sometimes it happens, um, I, I just did this one, one this past weekend, for example, um, where one of our uh, high school teams was doing a fundraiser type of event um, in our town that, that garnered a lot of support from the community, and I set up a table of books there, and I gave a percentage back of my table sales. Now, again, if you're talking about um, a small booth event, you're not talking about something that gives $750 or that usually takes in $750 in sales. This particular event was a three-hour event, and we had about $260 in sales. Um, so not a lot, but it's something that I do with the community, for the community, year after year, and I don't mind supporting the community that way. So what can you give back for an event like that? Well, again, you haven't reached that 750 mark where Osborne says, you know, give 15% or more, or give 15%. So, and on some level, it's up to you. Um, depending on the organization, it may be up to them. So, for example, if it's a new organization and they're running this, this booth, this vendor event, and they say they want 10% of table sales or 15% of table sales, that is not up to you. What is up to you is whether or not you choose to participate if they want 10 to 15% of table sales. So you can choose to participate one way or the other in that event um, and, or not. Uh, but what can you give back? Um, keeping in mind that our commission for book fairs is 
be cautious. Okay. Now, yes, you know, if you have a $250 book fair, you can put in for $125 in free books. But if you give a 15% table fee back, um, essentially what you're earning from that event is simply books. It's not going to be cash. So you need to be careful about that. So the other thing with the small booth events is this is where owning your own inventory becomes an asset. Um, I, Osborne does not recommend necessarily that you keep an inventory. They don't encourage you to go into debt. Um, I have personally never gone into debt to my family in order to get an inventory. Um, it's, but it took me a long time to build it up that way. <laughs> um, but here is where having an inventory is actually very beneficial to you because then you can choose to be more generous if you want to be. Knowing that you ordered these books through a book fair and so you got, you know, the two thirds and the one third and you got all the free stuff and everything else already. You can choose to be more generous if you want to be. At the little um, event that I did for one of our high school teams just this past weekend, I gave, as I always do, 20% of table sales. Now, the reason that I can do that is because I already own the inventory. So giving somebody 20% of the 100% that I took in is not a problem. Um, keeping in mind that I already, that, you know, I paid Osborne two thirds of its value and I already got a commission on it. I actually um, spent, I actually can get the books from Osborne for about 60% of their cost. So I'm still personally making a commission when I give 20% of table sales back. But because it is such a small event, that is a large percentage um, to give back otherwise. But this is the only time when having an inventory can make a difference in terms of what you are able to provide. Because if you don't own an inventory, then you're not able to provide Osborne with one. You're not, or you're not able to provide, uh, if you, sorry, I'm going to go back. If you don't own an inventory, then you're not able to um, be as generous because you have to replace the books for somebody. And when you replace the books for somebody, it costs you um, a higher percentage and so on and so forth. So it really, um, whether you are able to give cash back for small events, um, whether you own your inventory makes a difference about whether you're able to do that or not. So you can choose not to take events that require a percentage of table sales back. You can choose only to take events that require a flat fee. Um, and that's fine too. But I wanted to put that out there that this actually happens a, you know, a few times a year to me and um, that this is where you have some leeway if you want it, um, but you don't have to. This is your own business, so you get to make that choice yourself. Okay? Um, so that is what I have to say. That's, how, that's the training today. I hope you have learned about book fairs and reach for the stars and how to calculate things and the fact that Osborne really does work hard to protect us um, when we are uh, doing our, our book fairs and reach for the stars. Um, so thank you very much for joining me tonight and um, I hope you have a great evening. Bye.